are. We're yeah. back. We're back at it again. Hi, I'm Mo. I'm Mike. And you are listening to Blank Canvas. Today, we got an awesome guest. I'm very excited to have in studio with us. Just met him yesterday, but man, I felt an instant connection. I hope you felt it too. I yeah, did. He must have, because he said yes. He is a very interesting character. He is uh, an adult film star, a professional companion, a sex therapist, a dom, and he goes by the name of Tony Bishop. Or and, Sir Tony Bishop. Or Sir, Sir Tony, Tony Bishop. Bishop. Like yes. Real quick, because of the connection. Are you a Sagittarius? No, I'm a Cancer. Oh, oh we vibe, though. I think yeah, we vibe. I think we vibe yeah, it's weird. I always, when I meet new people, I'm curious when their birthday is, because I want to know if I'm going to vibe with them. <laughs> I think you. Virgos and I don't vibe very well, but no, not a Virgo I'll person. still be nice to them. <laughs> what, what What's your sign? I'm a Sagittarius as well. You're Sag? Both, yeah, Sag. Both Sagittarius. So both, we have uh, birthdays like a week apart or something yeah. like that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, we vibe. Yeah. Good. Just We're good. Vibe. But no, he's an amazing dude, and if you want to follow him, he's at Tony Bishop XXX, only on Twitter. Twitter, though is there a reason as to why I don't like Facebook um, <laughs> it is a trash I social media Let's it's be just trash social media that you give your free information to and they use it against you and with as many different privacy scandals that they have going on right now like why do you why do people continue to freely give their information yes. to this company that just abuses you and sells your information to Cambridge Analytica for millions and millions of dollars it's that helped a very elect relationship. That, <laughs> that helped elect Donald Dump in <laughs> DC, so come on. Yeah, it's oh, totally. it's a very abusive relationship. As as I think we're all in. As soon as she started talking about all the information shared, I was like, oh my god, I do <laughs> I do Facebook Pay. I was right? like, I do all this stuff. <laughs> they know everything about you. Uh, they really but pretty much. Follow they us don't on know Facebook. I'm a Sagittarius. Though. Follow us on uh, Facebook. They, they have your birthday, so they know you're a Sagittarius. That's true. I'm changing it now. <laughs> so you, you just broke down a lot of the things that. Um, Tony, Tony does. does. What I would be curious to hear is how would you, so you've got a pretty complex background and kind of the things that you do. How would you describe yourself best to uh, the audience or people that may, might not know what you do? Um, I'm a self-actualized gay man who is sexually confident. I'm an empath. I really like being honest and being mm -hmm. kind in every situation. Cool. I love that. It's beautiful. I think we need more of that in the world today, especially with, again, all of the negative that we see on the social medias and stuff. So I do like that I see you. Empathy on is important. Yes. Empathy is important. Absolutely. Now, I guess for people that aren't familiar with uh, what entail, like what entails in a professional companion and a sex therapist, what would you, how would you describe it to other people? How would I describe what I do? To other people I mean uh, for people that aren't familiar with it as far as being like a professional companion so being a professional companion or being a sex therapist first things first is uh, I'm an extremely discreet and confidential individual mm -hmm. so I can't give in this podcast any specifics of my clients sure. but I can but I can mention broad broad stroke um, things about what my occupation entails right, cause and what my occupation entails is really teaching people about human sexuality mm -hmm. teaching people about touch teaching people about reading signs from their own body uh, teaching people how to douche for the first time teaching really? people uh, how to this sounds very basic how to get off their phone or device <laughs> and actually interact with another human being yeah. face to face and as a device society or an i society or samsung whatever you have we're constantly glued to our devices yeah. and more often times than not i go to a restaurant and i see four people sitting at the sitting at a table and they're all on their devices well why didn't you stay home and just sit on your device right. instead of taking up space oh, so what i point. do is really you're a champion for human interaction yes yeah Ooh. which is beautiful because I like it's it's so weird. I was uh, we're both born in '86, right? Yeah. And then how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I'm 42. So you remember, and I think that we're kind of the end of this era where we really do remember our childhood without all this interconnectivity, right, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, I was 
probably you know 15 when i got my first cell phone but it was still a nokia and i only played snake on it right now <laughs> yeah seriously it's a whole thing so like it's so weird to see this generation now below us that is so it's it is sad it, it gets me sad watching these kids that just don't understand that you can go outside and you know, you don't have to stay inside and play Halo and call that dude the N word from your couch. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, you could do it to his face and it could be a fight and it'd be cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, a human interaction is something that you do see falling apart. So it's it's awesome that you're doing that. Um, I actually remember times before cell phones and before. 20,000 inch TVs were on every wall right. Right. like my first TV was like this big monstrous box TV that like weighed 5,000 pounds <gasps> solid wood too. in 1986 <laughs> right and um, you had to have a real interaction with the person to convince them that you were worthy of sleeping with them exactly as opposed to now it's like I got two good pictures one good pickup line and an address Exactly. We fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because it's about to be midnight, and I got I am rock hard. Speaking of rock hard, I did light research on Tony. I've seen your penis today. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Pretty oh, good stuff. Have you yeah. seen the top of it as well? I think I saw. Was there a tattoo? The tattoo there, thing. The, yeah. yeah. There is a tattoo on my penis. What is the tattoo <laughs> of exactly? The tattoo is of the number sixty nine, which is the cancer astrological sign. Ah. Yes. Tattooed. Ah. Double meaning. Tattooed on backwards, <laughs> because you can only see it correctly in a mirror. Because I am the one who has to look at it, not you. I saw it with a picture in a mirror. Yeah. It was yes. a great angle, first yeah. of all. That's a good dick pic to see. Yeah, that's... That. We could work... You could maybe help me with my dick pics. I've been yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Pretty, my angles are all off. All about the angle. <laughs> it's all about, all the, about the girth. I think you've already opened up a new uh, professional career for him. It's helping people with his Yeah, dick with dick pic <laughs> angles, yeah. Because what you did, that was art, first of all. What you nice. had going on, that's We're going to need a ring light. <laughs> We're going to have to invest in that. <laughs> Uh, what influenced you to become a professional companion? I'm going back to this. I'm sorry. I, I love really it. like yeah, the I'm idea vibing. of it. It's very interesting. Well, yeah, the professional companion. So that's somebody that, um, so you spend time with people, I guess on a broad scale, because you don't want to get too specific. You're, what are you, what are you doing on a day to day with that job? I, I teach people about their sexuality. I teach people about connectivity. I on a one-on-one -on -one basis? On a so one you'd be by, meeting, if on I a, wanted to be a companion. On a one-by-one -one basis, I yeah. teach people how to connect with another human being without a device in their, without a device in their hand. Sure. And I teach them touch. I teach, um, I, I, I do more than just teach, but it's, sure. I'm a warm body and, with social media and with being a device society, I think we become depressed and we don't know how to interact with people. Sure. So as a companion, as a sex worker, as a sex therapist, as a professional dom, as all of these things, it's about personal touch and human interaction to remove the stigma and shame around sexuality or okay. around holding someone else's hand in public. And so you, you teach them, but also you provide that touch to them in a way that are probably in turn lets them know, Hey, this is how it feels when this properly is, is happening to you. Go give that to the rest of the world. You, Correct. That's that's what your end goal would mm -hmm. be, right? You want that individual that you're touching with or, or helping understand touch to take what you teach them and go have that relationship or, or have that experience with another individual and pass that on, right? Is that yes. fair to say the big picture of what you're trying to... That is, that, that is the big picture, but it's also building up their confidence because okay. some of my clientele are elderly gentlemen who... Okay have been in sexless relationships for 30 years or who were coming out of the closet at the age of 70 oh, who have geez. never touched another man or the is, 80s must have been a lost <laughs> what the lost decade for them they could have done a lot in yeah. the 80s. Yeah. What are they, they could have <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's showing that showing that individual uh personal touch and connectivity and touching him for the first time in ways that he's never been touched by another man but he probably wanted but, mm -hmm. but he and wants he to experience right. something right so it's about approaching it with kindness it's about approaching it from uh, a place of 
love and sure. gratitude instead of okay wham bam thank you ma'am it's a let's jerk off let's right. get off yeah. bye never talking to you again sure yeah it's and, deeper than that and that and also you're opening up there's, there's these internal desires that this person for example somebody later in their life 67 years old has had within them tucked away for their entire life you're not only bringing that out but you're like revealing these things that you, you never want to call them wasted years but it's so sad that they lived in a world where they probably felt the pressure of not feeling comfortable with r r living out those internal desires, right? So you're giving them that well, opportunity. And in the 50s and 60s, when he was a teenager in his 20s, like being gay wasn't as okay as it oh. was today. Oh, yeah. Even when I came out in the early 90s, sure. being gay wasn't okay. Right. Like I was kicked out of my house at the age of 14 years old really and i've been on my own since and i was raised by wolves and <laughs> i found the right people at the right times and uh mowgli i survived yeah. i'm mowgli. a survivor building. that's awesome <laughs> and yeah, it is where yeah in the early 90s the only gay person i was aware of was pedro on real world exactly oh my god and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and also it was amazing to open your eyes to something like that but also the stigma attached was that all gay people have hiv which is unfair also right mm -hmm. exactly because it was unfortunate that that was the only window that you had to that and then i think that uh claire dane show there was a gay character uh, was what it was my so-called life? So -called yeah, life. my so-called yeah, life. Right. That was big. Yeah. But either way, so that's awesome. But also, that sounds sounds like you've been hardened by your own life, mm -hmm. uh, which has made you the man that you are today. I'm sure. And I, I mean, I have been hardened by my own life, but I don't let my past rule who I am today. Sure. I mean, certainly my past has shaped who I am in ways, but it's also. I don't carry around the rocks from my past. Sure. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a successful businessman right. that I am today. Especially in the line and, of work you're looking to do to be that soft touch for people mm -hmm. and stuff. And I have done the work myself in therapy and other places to let that shit go. Mm-hmm. I and then the the Dom thing interests me because I guess I just mentioned soft touch. I would assume some of your touching is not that soft. Some of my touching <laughs> is not that soft. <laughs> That's it's, what is that? I always that always captivates me because I think I know about it on a surface level. I've never really experienced that in the bedroom per se, but I do like you read about it and you hear about it and you understand it. I think it's all very. We're, at the end of the day, we're animals, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like there's a level of that domination that I think is internal within all of us like we're all a little curious about it cu curious but also it's something that's in our dna the ability to be um you know to dominate somebody i don't know it's i think it's more i think about it mainly from a male perspective also i'm representing the straight white males out there today. <laughs> yeah um, there's nothing <laughs> out there. but uh I guess, I guess i'm trying to figure out so what's uh what you got you into dominatrix ball so what's your perspective on that and what that can do in a relationship what that can do in a relationship is it's about power dynamic mm -hmm. and power should be used for greatness and about being a dom and being a professional dom is I'm trying to get my words mm -hmm. correct um it's about limits it's okay. about discussion of it's about discussion of what they want to do, what they want to experience. Communication. Do they want to recreate something from their childhood? Okay. Do they want to experience something new and different? Um, and it's all consensual. Yeah. I play safe, sane, and consensually. Yeah. Because that's the only way to do it. There are other people out there who just pick up a whip and start swinging it, and they don't know the first thing about it. Yeah, they've seen Indiana Jones once. Exactly. Yeah. Like, let's do this shit. <laughs> yeah. And that is not being a dom. And Fifty Shades of Grey is not, not is not being a dom. How far off is that? I, oh also, my I've God. never seen. I've never read it, but I know surface level stuff. It's just so far off re reality. Like, uh, like Disney throat. No, I didn't because it seemed like it was far off. I mean, I've grown up watching real sex on HBO. Oh, who I hasn't? Have, Come right? on, Thank sister. You. There Come it on. Is. I mean, that's how I've been introduced. Uh, I had a question. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, had a quite, oh, hold on. Oh, Ray Squared. Ray right Squared. All right. Well, just me being a filmmaker, and I've watched a lot of movies. Like You've watched adult short films. Bus or I've like, seen Short Bus. I love curious, Short Bus. Yeah, I'm curious what film has been has shown maybe the real side of it that's not like a puff piece like 50 shades but what's something that's more like that you'd be like well this is actually like a, this is real you know uh there was actually a really awesome film made with helen hunt and it's called the sessions and wow, it not is mad about you <laughs> oh wow Stop. it it is um it's about this woman uh, helen hunt's character helps this individual who's in an iron lung come out and have sex for the first time in his 40s huh. and it's actually based on a true story and i actually have met and worked with some of those real life people who um who are portrayed in that movie and that is probably one of the movies that gets it right Gets it right. Yeah. Did it have an impact on you too? It definitely did. I mean, have obviously an, it did. It definitely did have an impact on yeah. me. And when people start asking me, hey, what do you do? You're, I'm like, I'm a sex therapist. And they're like, well, what's that mean? I'm like, go watch this movie. Really? Because it literally will open your mind to what a sex surrogate, a sex therapist, a professional companion can be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even before we started the podcast, uh, Tony showed us a little bit of like a promo video of something that he's in, sure. uh, which is called Mercy Mistress. You play a character role in this new series. It's not out yet, is it? Uh, Mercy Mistress, uh -huh. you can find the first episode on YouTube. Oh, awesome. So okay, cool. uh, last year in 2018, uh, actually, it started in 2017. We crowdfunded in 2018 uh, Collective Sex, the production company, an all-female production company out of New York, um, came together and made the first episode. Um, and that first episode uh, was released in May of last year. Mm -hmm. And then we shopped that episode around to HBO sure. and Netflix and and all of these other TV stations. And um, they all loved it, but they wanted to Disneyfy. Scale yeah. it down a bit. Scale it down. Fluff it and up a little bit. Right. Yeah. Make it uh, family special and yeah. then you lose the realness of that and what's the right. point after that it at least with youtube and like their youtube red series or whatever that they do they will allow you to show those things and i think having that out there is important i mean especially with hbo is trying to like disneyfy it in a sense and they came from the world of like real sex and that yeah. makes me wonder like if they've ever tamed things down on that show in particular. Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah. I remember I remember my mom walking in on me watching that and I was like, I'm not watching anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrifying. I'm but, watching the salt and pepper race on TV. Mom. <laughs> but also too, I mean, watching that I think in an early age, like being like a uh, fourteen and up watching that, it's opened me up yeah. to want to explore things in that aspect. Or different things out there but yeah uh one thing that i would be afraid still to the state to kind of explore is like pegging more, yeah, pegging okay. <laughs> nice. uh no is um open relationships sharing my love with multiple people because i feel like pulling in all of those other energies That's with myself would be difficult and i would imagine that may happen to you pulling in other people's energy that you work with um and and trying to separate that is that difficult or like how do you um just like a therapist has a therapist. <laughs> yeah. I have a therapist and I work and and I have professionals in my corner mm -hmm. who I can call and talk to when I've had a bad day or mm -hmm. I've had a bad session or things didn't go as planned. Um, or I've had a really good day. There are yeah. other people in my community that I reach out and I talk to. Um, since I am an independent contractor, it's not like I can walk down to the water cooler and be like fuck I've had a bad day <laughs> yeah. I have to pick up the phone and I have to call someone and I have to interact with someone yeah do you so you um, have is there like a network of companions that you keep in contact with and I guess I think like 
I go to comedy festivals. That's like a bunch of comedians. Like we all have, we all know each other pretty well, but also, you know, it's still at the end of the day, it's a loner job. I would expect a lot of this is kind of you on your own, but do you have other people that you bounce ideas off of and kind of Definitely. communicate with? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Like and, a I have, collective. and I have yeah. a life coach. I have a therapist. Sure. I have a good network. I have a good network of people who really help keep me grounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I'm grounded, like there's, I mean, there's nothing better than that. Yeah. So. I think a lot of people, and right now I'm actually realizing that, like trying to build myself is you do have to keep yourself grounded and having, you know, not just therapy, but the people that remind you, uh, I guess. Not how to say Everyone that. needs that remind one. Remind you of who you are. Yeah. Is that fair? In what a sense, yeah. Say? Remind you of who you are. But everyone needs that one true friend that's going to call you on your bullshit. Yes, yes. that's what I mean. Right. Yes, like, exactly. To check you. And I have people in my life that I call when I'm like crazy because I'm hungry, <laughs> I'm angry, <laughs> hey, I'm Tony, lonely, I'm today? tired. <laughs> like, Did you have a Snickers? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think you're just hungry? <laughs> um, but it is good. That's. I, I also think that you will find in, uh, su- successful people or even maybe not successful people in that measure, but like also confident people, people that are comfortable within their own skin, which mm-hmm. I definitely get the vibe from you that you are. And I think that we, we've seen that from ourselves. Mo and I get along real well. Mm-hmm. You'll also see that they have a great network and that's wildly important. And I think some people overthink how important that is to be surrounded by people that will not only build you up, but also break you down when you get a little too high on yourself. And of stuff course. Like that. So that's awesome. I, I believe in brutal honesty and sure. and I also ask myself, um, does it need to be said? Does it need to be said by me? Yep. Does it need to be said right now? Yeah. Those are three important questions. Those are three important questions. No matter what situation yeah. you're in, I don't care if you're with your significant other at the dinner table and or you're in line at the grocery store, right. like and the person next to you is like keeps running your cart their cart into the back of your legs Mm -hmm. does it need to be said does it need to be said right now does it need to be said by me yeah and what is the best way to be kind in that situation without turning around and like taking their head off because you need a snickers yeah (laughs) be aware Mind you, you are in the line at the grocery store, so you probably just switch to the right and grab it. <laughs> but that's just me thinking about groceries. Yes. I'm, in- I'm sitting here interested because I know enough about you to know that the sexual tough touch and stuff like that is something that's probably affect- impacted your life over the last year or so, too, because you got out of a different relationship. You're in a new relationship with maybe different touches. Is yeah, that Yeah, different touches, different things, you know? Like, this is the first... this. Last year, 2019, and probably the few months travel out of 2018, uh, having a touch from a woman is completely different than yeah. having a touch from a man. I can only um, imagine. And also, too, I think because with a woman, for me, guys don't see what women see. And, like, the things that, like, Rachel sees in me, I would have never seen before. Sure. But she, like, she brings that out in a sense. I'm going to get emotional every time I talk about <laughs> Rachel for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I think Shark Week is going to happen. I'm not sure. <laughs> Shark Week is my period. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, everyone fears it. Got it. <laughs> but there's learning there, too, and I'm sure you have that because it's a unique, I guess, that I'm thinking between you guys is that you have people that you're helping that hadn't experienced that and you might have been pushing that off i don't know if you in earlier in your life did you have these thoughts of being attracted more to a female that you never expressed right for me like i've always been attracted to females i've just never really went out of the way and like expressed it acted on it acted on it i've always but i guess um i've always been in a relationship with a man yeah and every single relationship i've had with a man has been uh was they're it, the worst, aren't they? They're, I mean, every <laughs> single white guy I dated it was not awesome. Shout out to straight white man. <laughs> Yo, we out here rapping. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just different. It was just different as far as mentality goes. And I think that's a huge thing for me because I like to collect on an intellectual and mental level. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could touch anyone, but I think connecting with someone that you you uh, you feel that spark with. Sure. Especially, uh, I think right now it's just... It's hard because Rachel's in here right Rachel, now. Hey, it's, first of all, she's the, she's the best. She had already had a great, probably the best question so far. She did have the best question. In fact, we could just shut it down. Done. No, I'm just kidding. And then, Tony, do you, is it just uh, that your clients are all men? 
Do you ever help help a woman? Yeah. Uh, all of my clients are men. Are they? Okay. Yes. Would you? Is that uh, intentional, or would you? Is it something that translates between the sexes, or do you think that um, what you're trying to help is is men? Uh, since I'm a gay man and I know mm-hmm. right. the male body and the male anatomy, sure. like that, that really is my specialty or right. my niche. Stay in your expertise, right? Be- right. Stay in your lane. I mean, I have studied human sexuality and I have studied he- the female anatomy and yep. I uh, in college and other places, but it's not my specialty. Yeah. I don't know their feelings. I don't know their emotions the same way as I would know a man. That I mean, it, you know, if I have a broken foot, I'm not going to go to my gynecologist. Mm-hmm. Like you want to go to a specialist. Correct. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. That, that makes, makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, I kind of want to go back to Mercy Mistress for a second. Sure. Because she's your leather mom in New York. Which I oh, the woman that directed it, right? The, di- woman the, the woman who directed Mercy Mistress. Um, oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. And uh, she is she's one of she's one of my closest confidants. Really, and she's someone that's in my network who I call and I talk to when I'm having a bad day mm-hmm. because she has worked for uh, she's retired as a dom she's retired from being a dom now but she worked is that good benefits good pension (laughs) (laughs) she worked as a professional dom for many years many many years in new york and uh we worked out of the same studio together for several of those last years that she worked and uh it's just she's someone that i've bonded with and she's one of the people that can call me on my shit Mm-hmm. And leather mom, that was a term that you used. Is that something that I'm not privy to? Is that something that you, a nickname you've come up with? Or is that something? What is leather mom? Because I'm turned on. My, <laughs> <laughs> I can okay. only get so erect over here. Too, so. um, I want a leather mom. Um, <laughs> or do I? Or do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What am I getting into? Um. So, hold on. I'm processing this. Since I've been on my own since I was 14 years old, like okay. I have chosen f- my family members. Okay. She is one of my family members. Awesome. She is like a sister to me. She's like a mom to me. Okay. We're the same age. Like she it's just it's it's just a title that cool. like I have a I have a uh, I have a brother who we're not from the same mother and we're not from the same father like like 10 years apart and but he's still my brother sure. like and um i say leather mom because we have the same interests we have similar kinks i mean she's a straight white woman sure she's actually not white so i need to correct that she's a <laughs> chinese american immigrant <laughs> oh wow um who wrote and produced mercy mistress okay uh to break up the shame and stigma of sexuality Mm -hmm. because too many people were watching 50 shades of gray or too many people were watching porn and they think that's real Mm -hmm. and there is nothing real about porn i hate to break your your fantasy (laughs) over there but when my stepmom gets in a fight with my dad (laughs) and she wants to come in my bedroom that's not real (laughs) that's not a real interaction that's gonna happen in my life i mean it hasn't happened yet (laughs) you're like in your 30s but i'm waiting (laughs) patiently your stepmom also lives like really far away (laughs) i have no stepmom um so porn is not i believe porn that we see mass produced sure. straight or gay mm-hmm. tranny bisexual whatever, whatever. your whatever it is mm-hmm. is not the real deal it's desensitizing mercy, people mm-hmm. to, it is desensitizing people yeah. and mercy mistress was written for and hopes to be produced for the real audience and sure. not disnified mm-hmm that's interesting, and and you mentioned too that um, you've created this family outside of your own at fourteen. So you you have no communication with anybody from your family. I um, the woman the blood who family the woman who gave birth to me is still alive. I haven't spoken to her in ten years, uh, and I have two uh, siblings. Uh, I have a younger brother and an older brother, and. 
We speak okay rarely. Mm-hmm. But it's rarely. hard, and I'm sure that that's had a huge impact on who you who you are, who you become. I know that I still speak with my whole family, but they have a wildly large impact on the man that I am, right? And I I'd be interested to hear if that was something that has impacted the line of work that you've gone to, because I'm sure that at that age, that was like that was a very harsh thing to have happen to a 14 year old, right? And the way that you've reacted, some people react by harshness with harshness. It seems like you've gone the 180 and tried to be an empath and empathize with people's feelings and stuff like that to be able to maybe make sure that that type of reaction in a family doesn't happen to a young 14 year old that comes out. Yeah. Is that fair? Like that, is that an impact that it did have an impact to your career and what you do today? In creating myself, I mean, I did meet harshness with harshness, and sure? I did a lot of stupid things in my 20s, Fair. and I I drank, I drugged, I did whatever. I'm not... Mm-hmm. Uh, that was to- then. Sure. But I experimented, and I grew up. Mm-hmm. In a way, you almost have to go through mud to understand how to be clean. Like, yeah. you know, you have to go through experiences to build the person that you are or else or else you're you're desensitized and you're just you're a robot andy you know? dufresne josh Hank. <laughs> yeah. yeah you gotta dig through the shit to get out you really do you really i do. and in my 20s i experienced lots of different things sure. and tried lots of different things and i worked for corporate america and i worked oh, really and i worked as a florist and i worked at a coffee chain company and i worked at here and i did that and um it just it was something that I was drawn to mm-hmm. and uh like uh like Mo just said like you have to you have to walk through this shit yeah. to get clean mm-hmm. and uh in at the age of 30 right after I turned 30 I actually got clean and sober Good and so uh since then I've had no uh drugs or alcohol in my system yeah. and that has also given me the clear mind that i need mm-hmm. to be able to connect with people on a human level and on a human interaction deeper and through my 20s and my 30s and now my 40s i've always been a sex positive sex activist okay. like It's about removing shame. It's about removing stigma. And it's about talking about it. And too often times, and and anyone can go online and read the studies or reviews about people's fantasies. And the top 10 fantasies are out out there are all, they all come from porn, bondage, rape, three-way, three-way, like whatever, (laughs) whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that isn't reality, people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Reality is, how does this touch make you feel for the first time? Yeah. How does, what is it you really want to uncover or unleash? Um, you want to get beat with a coffee cord because your mother did it, and now that's the only way that you can get off, and you just discovered that, and you're 51 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's about playing safe sane and consensually Mm -hmm. and just having open clear boundaries and open communication i hope what i said just i love it no yeah it does make sense you know i am curious um because you have been how you've been doing this for a while now is there a moment because uh that you have helped someone come out of their shell completely like blossom and turn into the butterfly that they wanted to be is there anything that sticks out in your mind that you have helped someone do uh and maybe it was like a beautiful moment you know i'm sure you've had Uh, one yeah the one the one individual in particular i'm thinking of is he came out of the closet at 67 years old and that's huge like Like, you were telling us yeah he dated women he was never married Mm. uh but for 67 years like he went to college he's extremely educated like doctorate couple of times over like and worked very high powered corporate America jobs. He voted for both pushes. <laughs> <laughs> all, he actually he did, did not. The whole thing. Oh, he, did. <laughs> he did not. But he, uh, yeah, he's doing stuff. He thought about it. For essentially 40 years of his adult life he had been celibate. So oh, it's man. like seeing him come out of the come out of his box come out of the closet like go on his first date like 
see his first heartbreaks to see him like grow and like now he's like an old pro at it <laughs> isn't that crazy though but, that you can learn new tricks in the 60s though like that's really cool to hear too like i start getting a little teary too eyed because i'm like that's amazing for but it, it's amazing for someone to feel so confident and proud about who they are no matter what age they it, they they are yeah but it, it is you know it is you wasted your 20s with men. Yeah, but I mean, but also... <laughs> I mean, come I, on. No, I'm kidding. I, but even then, like, it took him that long. But the fact that he finally got to that point, it's so empowering and it's so good to hear about because you don't hear a lot about that at all. If anything, no. it's more suppressed than... Any, than sorry, I'm going on. If I'm I think that also... Shark Week is going to happen soon. <laughs> it's interesting that you're in... Uh, I thought you're in New York, New York City. New York City. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're sitting here in Phoenix, and I'm like, I don't know if this companion thing would work here. But uh, there's probably these so many people that mm-hmm. are at that point where they're 67, and they've been gay their whole life, or they've ha- at least had the fantasies within them that they want to explore that in this city, I think, too. I mean, if you yeah. look at, like, all the buttoned-up people in the city, New York is a great place for you to be at because people are more open. That doesn't hit the rest of the country for years, but hopefully it does with what you're trying to do, you know? But I mean, there are a lot of buttoned up people in New York as well, and Fair. and the suburbs. Yeah, I mean, it is Everyone where you secrets. find yourself in Terrytown a lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you don't do work. Do you do work just in the in the states, or do you travel? I mean, I know I see you traveling everywhere on your Twitter. By the way, at Tony Bishop XXX follow. <laughs> um, but does your work also take you outside of the country? Like, uh, do you work with people outside of the country and international? Other... International? Are you an international In- are you an man? International companion? Are you Mister Worldwide? <laughs> I I I I can be flown anywhere. I do have a passport and am available to travel. Nice. Um, Yes and no. Uh, So in part of keeping myself grounded, I love to travel the world and see other places. Um, uh, Just a week ago today, I was in Guatemala City, Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went and saw Guatemala Antigua, and I just took two days days off Mm -hmm. because as an independent contractor and working for myself, Getting a day off is kind of hard. Uh, yeah. So you got to give just, it to yourself. So I've got to give it to myself. Yeah. And I left the country and went and explored and went and had some great new food and some great new experiences. Seeing how uh, other people live. See how other people live. Mm-hmm. See. Um, but you, there get- are times where clients in other cities such as London or Dubai will fly me there and spend a few days with them and fly me back. Um, but Interesting. every everything I do is on such a case by case basis mm-hmm. yeah. that nothing nothing I do is pre written, pre recorded, like n- everything is approached from a really human humanistic point Mm -hmm. each person wants different things of course when when you travel is there any perspective you see in uh where america is with sexuality in comparison to others i'm sure there's others that are i mean obviously just from you see what you see in the middle east and i know some countries in africa and stuff like that i don't know if you've ever been down there but like that is just everything's taboo right even like uh, looking at a man, a man looking at a man would p- potentially get you thrown in jail, right? Oh yeah, um, Dubai. Do you, you don't you don't look at other r- men, right? So do you see that? Do you see America as a country that is at the forefront of being open with sexuality? Or do you still see us behind a lot of? I uh, see America as extremely right? sexually repressed. Repressed. Okay, really? that makes sense. Yeah. Where, where's the place that's not repressed whatsoever? The most open place. I think Spain. Really. I think really? I think men and women in Spain have been free with their sexuality a lot more and there's not stigma. Yeah. I have not seen as much stigma um in the places I've traveled in Spain. Yeah. versus places I've traveled in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been in small towns in Spain and I've seen two men walking down the street holding hands. You don't see that in a small town. No, no. I've, <laughs> if anything, I've been are... to the suburbs of Oklahoma City and I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I'm not going to see two gay men walk into the diner I was sitting at anytime soon. Right. It's so crazy how we shame, like we use shame to control everyone and to 
for what others want to see. It is. Uh, it's uh, it's Disneyfy yeah. everything. But let's be real. America's not Disneyfied whatsoever. Oh, uh, we're we're, we're a melting pot of a hot mess. Yeah. And but I love it. I know. I think so there's weird so much that, out there to explore, to see, to intake. And it's, it's so weird. I always think the American perspective is so odd because sex is so talked about. It's almost talked about in a callous way a lot by mm -hmm. the younger generation. Like Snapchat d was a, a social media thing, and now it's just for dick pics and titty shots and are we fucking a night and stuff like that but they're always around they're always exposed to sex sex is something that's on the forefront of everybody's mind and a lot talked about in a lot of bars and on mill avenue here in tempe and stuff like that but then to your point it's so, it is still so people are so uncomfortable in talking about it in the right way i guess is kind of what you are trying to bring out right correct like mm -hmm. nobody's talking about sex in the scope that it needs to be talked about they're just talking about it in almost a transactional way people are just like we fucking tonight and yeah. then it's that five minute boom 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 rabbits in a bedroom. Okay. You never talk to him again. Or you're talking about really doing it the right way. But I, but going deeper, I think it's because we are uh, a nation of consumption and uh, instant gratification. We want now, now, now. And yeah. as soon as we're done with that, like, all right, cool, let's move on to the next. Exactly. We are taking new phones come out and everyone's standing in line at their nearest uh, fruit store to get the newest phone. Yeah, right. exactly. And in foreign countries they don't they live on a lot less mm -hmm. and are just as happy individuals yeah and and also i think just taking the time uh for that human connection mm -hmm. for that human interaction not letting get not not with these the phones that are giving us our instant gratification yeah kama sutra wasn't written by a capitalist right no <laughs> no it definitely wasn't it was, <laughs> no. yeah have you ever read the kama sutra uh, I've briefed through some pictures. It's a picture book, right? It's, <laughs> it's a picture book. Yeah, it's a picture wow. It's a picture book. It's a picture book, right? No, well, I haven't. Uh, also, too, uh, going back to, uh, I guess, talking about sexuality and everything mm -hmm. like that. Growing up, I mean, it's okay for a lot of kids to watch violent things. Like, I grew sure. up watching Total Recall and anything Arnold Schwarzer Schwarzenegger did, but I could not go... It was terrible to have my mom come in and see me watching HBO Real Sex. Yeah. Like, it was just a thing that... Yeah. It's sad that we can't talk about it as, you know, young adults and to really open up. And what we have is uh, sex education or porn. Like, it's and an extreme or nothing. Yeah. And sex education has been removed from our public schools right. because yeah. we have so many Republican that. governors or schools that their money is being cut because they have to put in metal detectors for right. fear of another Columbine or something like mm -hmm. that. Right. And so, and in other countries, they haven't cut sex education. Yeah. They haven't cut, uh, they haven't cut sports programs right. because they need to pay for a new metal detector. Mm -hmm. They haven't cut, uh, many things yeah, if it's we didn't still invest, talked about if we didn't invest all these Hollywood movies in a Jason Statham film <laughs> yeah. they could actually be movies about actually how you should treat people in the bedroom and stuff like that and they still have the same impact maybe or we just, wouldn't be shooting up schools maybe it would be an orgy in the cafeteria <laughs> instead of an AK-47 are you looking at my you porn sir <laughs> the orgy in the cafeteria, orgy in the cafeteria. yeah it's it is wild food. and it's wild it's, it's but, crazy. I, but I have to but I have to ask you Mike yeah where did you learn about sex? Ooh. Did you learn about sex from porn? Or did you learn about sex from sex education class and how to put a condom on a banana? I learned that. I did. We had that. I don't think we had the banana, but we definitely had the sex education classes when I was growing up. Um, but, I mean, I was probably at that cusp of the internet where we were looking. Yeah, I, de I remember definitely looking at porn and stuff like that. Um, and I can't even imagine what. I remember like the first couple of sexual partners I had they were complimentary about they didn't what make I was you feel doing bad. And then in hindsight yeah I'm like I always think back on you know this chick that like yeah you you know it was good but I'm like thinking about it like that was like probably trash <laughs> I was just doing the the sledgehammer like just going in like, <laughs> like I had hammer. no I didn't know what foreplay was I was like why do you have a bra on right now let's just throw that off um so I think in my 20s, I was very conscious of trying to slow it down and be that foreplay matters so much. And like just 
not. And when was the last porn you saw that had 25 minutes of foreplay? I know, right? <laughs> you know, what? there was some HBO stuff, though, that used to have a little bit more of softcore. And it was like the five minutes of like sucking on the titties and doing that stuff like that. Uh-huh. I remember you don't see those porns anymore. Though. No. Also, with the way you can on HBO, you couldn't fast forward back in the day. I mean, on you porn, I can just hit. Oh, that's five minutes in. It's probably where Papa needs to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I honestly do think about that when I'm like between relationships or I am watching more porn than I should be watching, how it is going to impact my next sexual encounter. Of course. And I try to take a deep breath and be like, don't rush into it. You haven't gotten laid in a couple months or whatever. Don't do the thing that you want to do right away. Slow it down because there's two people involved here. Of course. You know? Do you watch porn? Yes, I do. <laughs> but uh, but but the porn I watch is from the 80s. My favorite porn star is Al Parker from Falcon uh, back in like the late 70s, early 80s. And uh, porn from Europe where I don't know the porn actors because it's like um, it's like. Because you've worked I'd, with other actors. Because I don't want to see Larry's balls bouncing <laughs> against that asshole. I know Larry, and uh, I'm friends with Larry. Like I'm friends with him, and I'm sorry, <laughs> he's not a top. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever look at uh, people that you know, uh, and do you ever kind of? I don't want to because I don't want to say air check because that's what I get. Uh, do you ever? What, critique them? critique that's the word yeah I'm yeah critique you're like text him oh. and be like yo your stroke was all off on that right? last video <laughs> no. <laughs> no like you missed your mark i mean <laughs> no not at all nope okay good because i would hate it if somebody called me that was on the air and uh was like hey you could have done your break better like this like as soon as i was like done or something like that. i'm like son <laughs> okay. of a bitch get out of here uh, let yeah. me fail for a minute okay oh uh, well tony i am so glad that you took the time to hang out with us today you are just now one of my favorite human beings Aww, i've learned thanks. so much from you and also i've opened a lot up a lot more to you than i think i have you know to mike like mike had no idea yeah, that nice. i was with rachel nice. no, I'm just joking. first of all i you guys are together <laughs> i'm getting a vibe from rage <laughs> that that's not okay no, all right no, i'm no, misreading sorry. that all right. sorry, sorry. i will stop texting you that later <laughs> Thank I apologize. You. um i but you also have I, I appreciate getting to know you and also hoping to Get continue to know you. This is exciting. I didn't know who you were before Mo told me about it. And I, I know, looked in. So yet. excited. Sir Tony Bishop cool. dot com. Tony yeah. Bishop XXX on Twitter. Okay. Like, send me an email. Yep. There's a contact me on my. Uh, there's a contact me link on my website. He will fly uh, out to Phoenix to be your companion for the right price. <laughs> Well, I'm in Phoenix because I wanted to do this radio show. Yeah. I'm in Phoenix because I needed some sun on my bones. And <laughs> right now, it's fucking 35 and cold in yeah, New York 100%. City. Yeah, 100%. That's not too Come bad. back whenever, dude. Yeah, always Thanks. welcome to have. You're more than welcome to come back. Um, also, one last thing. Is there anything that you want uh, to share with people that uh, kind of help them open up a little bit? Like if they are having trouble uh, looking for that touch and that... Uh, that connection what would what would be your advice to those people just the number one thing that they should stop doing now to connect or start doing or start doing yeah it's a loaded question find gratitude in whatever it is you're doing or stop doing it that's Mm. that's really deep if you think about it profound yeah absolutely i like it if if you're not grateful for what you have or you're not grateful for the air you're breathing, the the ground you're walking on, then stop doing it mm-hmm. and get grateful yeah. and find where your calling is. Because do you want to wake up when you're 67 years old and be in the closet still? Live life. Mm-hmm. There is no dress rehearsal. Live it right now. I'm not living in the past, my shitty past. I'm not living in next week, hoping the phone's going to ring. Mm-hmm. I live for today. You live the best you you possibly can be. Yes. For, for you. Yes. In the moment, yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. Tony, you're so fucking inspirational. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank I you. can't wait to talk to you again, man. Talk to you again soon. Yes! Appreciate you, Tony. <laughs>